Hello, my wonderful people. Welcome, welcome once again to IPOB Media, the place where we bring you the gospel of Biafra. This is the only channel where we bring you the latest legit news, information, updates, trends, happenings, events, and everything you need to know about Biafra and our struggle for freedom. Yes, if you are new to this channel, do well to subscribe, click on the notification bell so you don't get to miss out on any of our interesting videos. And don't forget to share on all your social media platforms so that, you know, everybody, especially our fellow Biafra, as we get to know what is going on as regards Biafra. All right, we encourage you to share your thoughts in the comment section. Let us know what you think about this video and give this video a thumbs up. All right, straight into what we have for you today. In this particular video, um, former President Good Luck Jonathan has come out to you know, talk about the new government, talk about INEC, talk about security, talk about court and, uh, you know, how INEC has been the problem of this country, right? So making a small thing very difficult. This this is a very powerful video and I want you to watch to the very end. You will understand, you know, the dynamics of, you know, this country called Nigeria and uh, the reason why we need Biafra so that we can set up these systems to run smoothly and effectively. Watch this video. We are inaugurating uh, the president-elect uh, Ahmed Bola Tinibu and the vice president-elect uh, Senator uh, Shatima. Uh, their own mood is slightly different because President Buhari has graciously served eight years. God has helped him serve eight years and is handing over not to another political party but he's handing over to his own political party. So the circumstances presently is quite different. But I know the mood of the country generally is because of the issues bordering on the elections. So some people are happy, some people are sad, so all kinds of sentiments and feelings. In my own time, especially the 2015 election, my ministers, my senior uh, officers, People who worked with me, there was this fear that this one that we've lost the election, what would be our fate? Would the new government just throw all of us into jail without giving us even fair hearing? Because government is next to God and decide to do anything. That fear was in the minds of our people. Some people feel, could I even run away? Should I stay in the country? But to them, that will not be much of a problem because it's the same party that uh, is taking over. So uh, the tension we faced then, the Buarez team may not face the same tension. Yes, some few people may have some issues that bother them, but on the average, they will not have that kind of uh, feeling. But it used to be tense, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, by this time, then of course already I've considered the vote to the president. So that was completely over. And I knew why I considered the vote, because I was more interested in the country than myself, which I advise every politician to be more interested in the country than themselves. Without a country, there will be no president. So I know it used to be tense. And how do we ensure that Nigeria comes out of the current electoral controversy uh, through reforms that will help grow the country's democracy? The problem we have is the electoral management by the INEC and the security. And I used to give an example. If two soccer teams are playing and the referee decides to look the other way, they will enjoy themselves. If people are contesting for elections, should expect that it's like a soccer game. Everybody wants to win. And, so, and you must not allow it. The electoral management bodies uh, share more than 60% of the blame. Because if they do their work well, the politicians will have no choice than to follow the rules. They, the security, and the courts. I believe one day we'll get there, but I feel sad now that uh, our electoral process is still wobbling. So we have migrated from Canada to Viva, which is a superior technology. Why do we still have problems? Manual 
voting, we have problems in this country. Electronic, we have vo So where is the problem coming from? Is the independent electoral, uh, is the electoral management board design NEC in this case? And NEC has to sit up so that they will not throw this country into conflagration one day. And people must be serious. And NEC must sit up. We should commission one of these internationally uh, known IT companies. They will want to protect their image and allow them to build a system for us and also manage it during our elections. We can train our people, but they should manage it. That this last election, they are saying, oh, one director in charge of IT did this or did not do that. If you bring Google or one of these uh, giants and they agree to build it and manage it for you, there will be nobody in Nigeria who will not be involved. So it should be completely neutral. And probably when we get to that level, where all those who have smartphones will not need to go to any place to vote. You bring out the, take it, go to your unit and press the button and you vote. You can vote in your kitchen, you can vote in your bedroom, you can vote in your city, you can vote in your car. Even if you're in the U.S., you can vote. And the outcome of the 2023 presidential election is being challenged in very controversial circumstances, uh, just like that of 2007 that brought you and late uh, President Umar Musayara Dwight to power. Uh, any advice to share on the best ways to resolve electoral disputes without plunging the country into a crisis, uh, especially for those who are in court challenging the victory of Bola Ametunobu? I said, when I took that decision, I have, was not too exposed to the global election processes, and especially in Africa. And since I left office, I've been leading election observation missions. Even this year, I'm going to lead the African Union team to Zimbabwe, and the elections will come up. They already appointed, uh, gave me the letter, depending when the government would fix the date for the election. So I've been involved in a number of elections now. But one thing about Nigeria, which I believe we must correct, and which a decision I took when I was a vice president, that if I have the opportunity to be corrected, is this idea of ex uh, 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 conduct of elections. Probably that made me to appoint somebody I did not even know to be the electoral umpire. And uh, a number of people say you did the wrong thing. Some people felt, well, you wanted to correct something. We, I feel worried that in Nigeria, our elections are still so controversial. We have not accepted our electoral results. We are the giant of Africa. If we have not gone to the moon, then at least we should be in position to lead Africa in terms of democracy. We should be able to conduct free and fair elections that other African countries say, look, why not do what Nigeria has done? Why not all? of us behave like Nigerians in terms of conducting their elections. Our elections have been categorized as one of the worst in Africa. And even if you ask me as a Nigeria to vet, I will admit, because I've been going to other countries. I'm not saying things don't happen in other countries, but we really, really need to improve our standard of elections. A country like Tanzania, you know, presidential elections don't even challenge in court. Though all of us who have been leading international observation missions who have recommended that that is not the best. Even for presidential elections, the matters will go through the court process. Let people who lost the election be convinced that they lost the election. Otherwise, one day the country can implode. If somebody just boxed into a corner, you cannot even complain. It's not the best. Allow that person the leeway to complain. So to me, our own is quite good. For presidential elections, we go through two stages, appeal court and Supreme Court. For governors simple elections, unfortunately, go through three stages, but I believe that aspect of the constitution or the electoral laws will be amended. Two stages, three stages too much. I remember during your period, one of those recommendations of the Uwe's panel report was for the appointment of the INEC national chairman by the National Judicial Council, of which your cabinet uh, then said it wasn't going to accept that recommendation. What would you prefer as a solution? Should we continue to have the president 
appoint the INEC national chairman or should the National Judicial Council be in charge of appointing national chairman of INEC going forward? As you look globally, a setting up the electoral management bodies are divided into three broad groups. One, the president appointed everybody just like in Nigeria. I also appointed. You appointed the chairman, you appointed all the uh, national commissioners and the uh, uh, resident electoral commissioners by president who is a politician, who has a political interest to protect. Some countries go to the extreme where a completely neutral body appoint everybody. The president has a role in it. Some countries blend. A neutral body recommends people then from which the president select. So before you are selected, you already pass a basic level of screening. In fact, what I wanted to do if I had stayed in office was that if uh, the Jigas tenure had expired, then I wanted to vote. And I would take people by surprise. I would have called uh, traditional rulers, not all of them, the religious leaders, civil society, the journalists, at least 100 of them into a room. They will not know. We'll get the computers and so on and so forth. Okay. Nominate a Nigerian you think should be a chairman. Everybody will nominate. Then we scream. Then we'll go for another round of now. Even if we'll sleep that for the whole, the whole night, so the whole day and night, we'll be reducing, 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 reducing until we get to somebody who everybody will say, this is this person. I wouldn't even want to give it to any particular department of government or an institution. I wouldn't want to say NJC or CJ because everybody has an interest. So the best thing is not to get a constant team that will be appointing. But any time that I next chairman position expires, I want to change them, then you just call people. So during that process of selecting these people, one may emerge as a national chairman of the INEC. Then from there you appoint the, the commissioners. From there you appoint the resident electoral commissioners. So you see that their selection is broad based. And just before I let you go, Your Excellency, what's your wish for Nigerians as we go into uh, this new democratic dispensation? And if there is any advice for uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu and Vice President Kashim Shetima? One advice I will give, and I believe most of that will give them, is that the journey towards election passed through two major stages, the party primaries and the main general election. And all these stages, there used to be a lot of fireworks. To become the candidate, a lot of the fireworks people will offend you. Finally, people will offend you. Especially these days of social media, people write whatever they like. Sometimes it could be painful when you read such stories. Yes, my people, thank you for watching to the very end. You've heard from our former president, right? And, uh, and one thing I learned from what he said is that INEC is a very big problem and uh, we need a system that will sort out this problem. But I, I, I don't believe this government will do it. All right. I want to see your thoughts in the comment section. Let us know what you think about this. Let us know your own country. Push on right. Burn them down. All right. If you've not subscribed to this channel, do well to subscribe. Click on the notification bell so you don't get to miss out on any of our uploads. And don't forget to share so that many beer friends, we get to know what is going on. Thank you very much. God bless you.